best of threes to go today. And it's going to continue through with this TVP. Featuring Skillus and Spirit. Bottom right corner, Red Protoss player representing Team Liquid. It is Skillus. And spoldering it over in the top left hand side, repre representing very cool Ukrainian team, Navi. It is Spirit. It's so nice that you've got all of these very, to me, old school big orgs just stepping in. Some some for the first time, some again uh, in StarCraft 2 and Navi, obviously home to a very, very uh, highly, uh, highly reputable uh, CS uh, team. And, you know, it's just really cool that they've seen the seen the amount of value you can have from just having a top player like uh, Spirit on their roster. Yeah, no, uh, it's cool. I mean, we, we've talked about it a lot, right? Top teams picking up players, sometimes even multiple. It's just good to see, you know, a good little injection of life into the StarCraft scene as well. Uh, these teams which have sometimes had pasts in StarCraft 2 as well, and some of them it's their first foray into StarCraft, but there's obviously so much, you know, potential still in our scene. We've got great games, we've always got ourselves a whole bunch of Awesome action going on, so it's always good to see. How's that Proby? It's just checking across here, by the way. So not too much crazy going on. The probe just wants to double check. It's not a proxy or anything. And uh, yeah, Spirit is not going to engineer in Bay Block at all himself. He's just going to stay at home, and he's actually going to high ground CC as well. Does not want to mess around with that probe or any potential aggression at all. Yeah, and uh, like this, this matchup is even though it's PVT again. This to me is a very different one on paper because Clem. I think he's like seed one or two for this uh, regional. Like he's absolutely one of the most European regionals of any player, I think at this point. Uh, just a tip top contender. Uh, these guys, on the other hand, are both absolutely top eight capable. Absolutely are. Like, um, so this is a very even match. I can't say that either one was super happy about meeting the other, but I think they're both very happy that they didn't have to play Clem uh, being like two zero in the group, you know? Yeah, that's very true. I think at this point, you can't really complain about who you meet, right? You're 2-0. This is your chance to make playoffs already. You know, if you don't make it through here, I'd really favor either of these guys to have a good shot in the 2-1 matchup as well. So, unless they play Gabe, maybe. Gabe's probably the toughest opponent that they're going to meet there. So, yeah, this is a, um, a, cool, a cool opportunity for both. They're actually very evenly matched all-time match history against one another. Um... They just play a good series, you know. To me, they're a good match in general. They're both these players that continue to rise up through this European scene. They can both, you know, contend on the higher levels as well, uh, but they're both missing that kind of bigger finish. So, uh, really cool matchup when you kind of look at the uh, the stats between the two. And again, the recent matches that they played against each other continuously are just like very interesting back and forth, good battles. It's really cool to see. Yeah, like to me, um, Spirit. I mean, he is a greedy Terran, but I feel like he really reeled it in a lot. Like, this game, he's very blind, but it's a very safe build he's gone for. And it's uh, a fairly orthodox build as well. Gonna go for the two Widow Mind drop eventually, I would imagine. And Skillish, just on his side of things, ooh, was gonna go for a cheeky Widow Mind explosion and dodging it with a shade, but Spirit quick to lift it up. And it will be a tank follow up as well from Spirit. So looking to be very aggressive. Uh, or in fact, maybe he's just going to be safe because, I mean, that would be nice, wouldn't it? But what's he doing with his medevac? Whereabouts is that lad? Okay, okay. Does pick up those Widow Mines eventually. And he has no idea what he's going to be flying into with this. But, like, <laughs> this is uh, definitely quite brazen. But it's a, a solid way to start things off. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's going to be blind attacking in. But to be fair, the Widow Mine drop can also be seen as a chance to scout, right? So... You're going to find out what kind of units are here. You might get a spot on the tech structure. In this case, he's going to see stalkers. You might not be able to real blink off of them. Depends where the medevac is at and how quickly it gets shot down, I suppose, is to see our blink about to finish and our nexus coming through. Yeah, and it's going to be two tanks. Might be more. A lot of Terrans have been following suit with uh, Maru because, uh, again, this, this matchup goes in waves, I feel, where... Protosses will be more gas heavy, going for like the Stalker Colossus big mix of things, or slightly less gas, going for like more zealots. But we will see what's he doing with the factory right now. Still got the tech lab on it, is available for any of those barracks units. This is very much like a big gay push to me, where it's just like, 
a lot of power. Oh, oh, has to be careful with that Widow Mine. There is an Observer chasing it as well, so that Widow Mine won't get much done. The one in the natural also, I think, only killed one guy. The, the, the engagement in the middle of the map was a Stalker that did die for the trouble, but Spirit just goes back on home, and I think he was looking for quite a bit more from all this. I, I think so too. I think you wanted to try and get like a bit of a combo push going. That's now not happening. Skillless is going to be looking to play uh, into that third base. He's getting a Robo Bay down. He's obviously got Blink already, so he's got map control as well. So, uh, yeah, in that regard, it is going to be uh, feeling as though Skillless is in a pretty comfortable spot. You just lose this Observer, so the Raven is going to be put to use right away. I think on the scout on the fact that upgrades are coming in, though, I mean, there's not really much to confirm there. The starboard's going to go to a reactor. I'm going to get back to that factory on a tech lab. So more tanks on the way from Spirit. So he's going to really solidify his defense and that kind of sieging power, which is good for an extent in TVP, although it typically does run out of steam once more and more charge shots come up. The tanks just can't trade well enough against them. So that is uh, something that's typically on a timer. Sometimes you can play tank styles all game long, but then you, again, you need other answers to the Zelds usually. Yeah, I, I, I like this position that Skillis is in. By the way, really nice what Mappa just showed us. Some pylons scattered around in the north there. So there is that Raven coming in, but it goes in with a, a big notice over here. So Skillis, I think he will have spotted it. We'll get units in position. He does exactly that. And that Raven most likely won't be able to get much done here, but does show itself, doesn't waste any energy, which is nice. And just five Stalkers at the front here. Oof, make that four. Just... Keeping Spirit honest over here. Just making sure that he doesn't take that third too early, just slowing him down, because Skillis right now does have a little bit of an eco lead, and his army is absolutely getting chonky as well. Yeah, that's getting stronger and stronger. Spirit's going to try and tech up with those ghosts. That ghost had me finishing soon, so that will be a pretty big deal. You got some ghosts out, get some EMPs available. I imagine that's going to be a huge factor here for him, so getting that extra tech available. Get that underway. This concussive shell and the plus one attack upgrade is going to be finishing up. Yeah, Spirit was quick to get his five barracks online. Not before making the third, obviously, but quick to get it online. And it looks like he's got a little hit squad over there in the north that wants to clean up a few of those scouting pylons. They are accompanied by a medevac. But Skillis, he knew about it. He had an observer over there that did get to spot that move out. In fact, ooh, look at that from Spirit. He's very quick to just be like... Okay, okay, I got a pylon. Get out of there. So they're both reading each other very well, taking it very, very cautiously. Absolutely. As the Raven comes back Ooh. along the right side, the Stalkers are looking to get the catch on that Raven. Oh my goodness. How wow. did we miss that? I have no idea. And Spirit's probably like, Ooh, dodged a bullet there. They definitely dodged a bullet because that, that Raven has a big role to play, man. Like, it's Colossus. There's so much power in those Colossus. Keeping that alive, like, he wanted to bring it back home, but realizing that, okay, okay, I'm, I'm fairly blind on the map. It's going to be a hard journey to get it home uh, safely. Yeah. No, that's... Um... <laughs> that That's really something. Well, Spirit is just sitting back at home, by the way. He's so just chilled out here, right? Like, he's not pressing into anything too eagerly. It's just a Widow Mine drop coming down on the left-hand side. You see a lot of Terrans definitely being much more out on the map by now. But he's playing a very slow going setup. So just chilling back. Prism speed is on the way from Skillis. So that's going to give him a lot more harassing options too. So that'll be something for us to keep our eyes on. As that Zard is going to grab a Marine. And here comes the Raven full of energy still. He's going to decide that that just ain't it with the battery there. He's not going to drop any turrets. He'll just wait even longer. Look at all these red dots on the map, by the way. Like Skillis, yeah. it feels like he sees a lot like he he's feeling comfortable behind this he's also getting ready for a stage in the game that if spirit was on the map he would not be getting ready for like dark shrine early double forge on the go he's feeling all right this would mind drop comes in and we'll be able to get quite a few probes first one getting yeah. a nice shot here and this would mind oh a little bit slow to get the burrow on and we'll get it oh i, I love the retargeting yeah. Really good retargeting. Just being annoying, obviously. We can blink away with these stalkers. There's a little bit of a shame. I think if that wouldn't mind burrowed faster, it might have had a good shot on that third base because the probes got stacked up on the stalkers trying to get away. So uh, either way, we are going to see these couple of mines getting cleaned out. And that is going to be that fourth base completely cleaned up. 
Plus two attack and plus one armor, by the way, still coming up from Skillers, so his upgrades continue to come through as he attacks into Disruptors and that Dark Shrine. All these later game units that are such a headache for the Terran to deal with. They really are. And now Skillus is getting his own War Prism in a pretty nice location here. Remember, there's actually not one single Viking on the map. And this Spirit, he's been defending the whole game or getting ready for an attack, but it feels like the one attack that did come in this third base felt like it, it kind of caught him off guard a little bit. Yeah, he's, he's really just been sat here just waiting, to, you know? Like, he's been super defensively set up. We are going to be seeing this bunker going down. 15 SCVs have fallen, so 15 workers drop. CC is going to move down to the fourth base location. We will have ourselves the army of Skillis ready to pounce elsewhere in the next few moments. This army in the center, I mean, three Colossi, three Disruptors. Lots of potential, but there is the danger of those tanks, because attacking into that siege position is not easy. Spirit will ask for a quick little pause here. Hopefully nothing too major. We had a couple of pauses yesterday with some lag issues, so hoping to steer clear of those mm. today and keep the games moving. Absolutely, because right now we're in a pretty damn close game. Like, if I just kind of relay what units they have, five Disruptors, three Colossus. A lot of Zealot and Stalker, but those are the big units that can get a lot of damage. Raven did make it back home. Seven Ghosts, three Tanks, 16 Marauders. I mean, those Colossus can be kind of taken out of the fight decently quick, at least for a moment. There's no Vikings to truly uh, whip them out of shape. So Skillis doesn't have to be too worried about that. And his probe count still is 10 ahead, and he's producing five at a time while taking a sixth base. It's a fun situation. But if you were to tell me which player's feeling more comfortable right now in this game, I I I'd say Skillis any day of the week. Yeah, I think so. He's gone up to his bases very comfortably. The aggression from the spirit has been non-existent, really. A couple of Widow Mine drops. He's just done a bunch of damage. He's got map control all across the board. And he's honestly poised to, to go in and potentially take a fight as uh, spirit, <laughs> spirit takes about a minute to update us on the uh, reason for the pause. But uh, I assume it's just not resolving as quickly as he thought it might. So a moment or two, hopefully not too much longer, and this will settle down. We can get this resumed. Here in this game, number one of Spirit versus Skillis here. As, like you said, Ben, it is looking good for Skillis. He's definitely got to be feeling comfortable. Do you think, though, Spirit's about to get up to Libs and so on? Is that going to be more of a challenge for Skillis? Like, is Skillis okay just letting Spirit be on four bases? Or, you know, because I'm thinking very soon it's going to be very tough for him to actually go attack him in, right? It, it is. The problem area for Protoss is when Terran's on five and, like, very mm. secured on five. Like, I, I feel that's where it starts to get, like, Oh goodness, we're getting, we're going there, aren't we? Like, still we're in a spot where Spirit's gas count is going to be incredibly low. I don't think. Let's have a look. Is there a fusion core online? I actually can't see the building tabs because there's the big pause sign in the way. Um, <laughs> no, no fusion core on the way either. Um, so, like, we're quite a quite a far bit off where this game does get very, very scary. Um, Skillis. Right now, it's it's his playground, and remember, he's got that dark shrine as well to make full use of. Are we still cameraed in the game, or yeah, we're the game's game. just about to get going? All right, yep. all right, nice. We are good, so we are going to three, two, one, and get it back underway. And obviously, just a little like spike to come in, also to calm down. But now it's calm, and we're back on track. And uh, like I say, spirits getting to those libs. Skillis is spreading out and just figuring out if he wants to take a fight. No, he sends a bunch of units home. I'll also keep in the majority of the tech units out on the right side. Stork is going to find this Raven, so full energy does go down. As the ghosts on the right side are very exposed, the Disruptors are going to find every single ghost. Oh my goodness, that could not have been a better start of this fight for Skillis. And Spirit Supply just plummeted. I mean, we actually got Zealot showing up on the left-hand side. Disruptors are still keeping these Colossus alive. It looks as though Skillis is just good. As we basically just come out of that... Uh... <laughs> wow, we come out of this pause and Skillis is just going to win the game, man. Mate, that was a disaster for Skillis. Like, ghosts cost about as much as disruptors do. And the fact that he killed a good seven of those, I mean, Skill uh, Spirit is dealing a drop at the south part of the map, but still, that is so much value right there. And now Skillis, his army is fairly brittle over here, but these disruptors, man, they have been absolute value in these series that we've seen so far today. Yep, Disruptors have been absolutely the unit of the day for the Protoss players. Skillers does get that drop on the bottom side of the map under control, and as he gets that under control, he is 
Gonna continue pressing on this top side, still looking pretty comfortable over here. It's gonna be a stim in from these bio units. So in we go, disruptor shot fires through. Boom, we get rid of a couple more orders. To the south we go and we get rid of a couple of units as well. I mean, that disruptor Oof. goes down, so we're finally gonna get cleaned up. Spirit pushes this back, but the numbers are there for Skillers. Obviously, he denied a fourth base, he denied a ton of workers during all of this. He is 100% still set up in the better position. I'll tell you what, Spirit, like everything we've looked at has been really bad for Spirit, but this counter drop that he did actually kind of kept him in it. Like it, it, it stopped the aggressive warp-ins. Skillers was probably a little bit distracted by it as well. Absolutely worth its weight in gold, this drop that he had going, but still Spirit's very much on the ropes. And remember, he did lose that fourth amidst all this, so every minute that goes on skillis is getting way way bigger we're seeing disruptors die randomly on the map as well but he's getting bigger man this is very very bad for spirit now he's on the absolute back foot here yeah he is gonna win this fight in the center against those few zealots i mean skillis only have i mean look at skillis's armies like it's three disruptors and zealots basically a few stalkers a dt to harass with the actual army of spirit is maybe got a chance i mean if you can avoid the disruptors and if you can deal with the zealots somehow some way maybe i'm grass med straws but i feel more hopeful for spirit than i ever thought i would be and i love the counter attack here from skillers anything to slow spirit down he does catch another disruptor here with this force again his economy is in absolute shambles the reinforcement should surely just be able to clean this out but the uh, upgrade so far allowing skill spirit to keep on trading with those zealots and yeah i mean he has to keep dodging back but he will go until this army gets cleaned up, which is what currently we're struggling to do. Skillers is going to lose both attempts oh, of warping in here. That's actually a big deal, man. It's a big deal, and this army that he's got is very brittle. Like, he's had quite a bit of friendly fire on these disruptors, and supply is very deceiving because they're about neck and neck on armies right now. Skillers, again, can make more. He absolutely can, but he has to be careful. Yeah, he really, he really does. I mean, he should be fine, Skillers. I don't agree with him building a Stargate right now. Right now, he's just in, like, if he just lives, he's fine. But he's building a Stargate as though this game needs to go on a whole bunch longer. He just needs to spend money on defending. A few more warpings come in. This base is going to be in trouble. This is, again, the issue with Disruptors. Disruptors being used as kind of this kind of attacking into the Terran because the Terran's already in position. The Disruptors are really weakened a little bit. He gets a catch there as the Terran had to come around the corner, walking against the edge, allowed skills to close the distance. This Disruptor has to back away because it's about a friendly fire. And in the end, Spirit is going to be pushed back by Skillis. But man, the Spirit made Skillis sweat for it in here, here in the end. I mean, again, Skillis is just too far ahead to really lose, but Spirit had me with a light slight bit of belief. It really felt like these last few minutes were all about how well Spirit, Spirit was handling the fights, and Skillis was, you know, I, I think a bit surprised that the, the bear bit back so hard, and these disruptors, nice dodges out of Spirit. I think if Spirit goes into the next game playing like he did over the last few minutes here, uh, Skillis could be in some trouble. Yeah. Yep, yep, oh, yep. The, these single zealots we've seen in mineral lines have been really good. And even though Spirit has taken his fourth base, it's with his main CC. So it's not it's not as good as you'd think if you just kind of glimpsed at the minimap. Yeah, no, he's he's really hanging on by a thread at this point, and we're really just one good shove from Skillis away from kind of seeing this game wrap up. The Zelds have consistently been active on the other side as well, so Skillis has made sure that Spirit's never been able to, you know, think about truly rebuilding an economy, and that obviously goes a long way too, right? If you can't ever, you know, keep your economy alive, this should simplify things. And so in the end, we do get the victory for Skillis. He does get to go up one to zero. Like you say, I mean, he played very well, and then Spirit kind of came alive when he was losing. So if he can kind of harness that energy, take that into game number two and be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to be a, you know, a strong, you know, I'm going to play like this game two from the very start. Like I played the game one at the end. Maybe Skulls does end up in trouble. Maybe that does become a problem. And again, can Spirit find that energy early enough? Will be a fun map going up next, though. Crimson Court, the map of yeah. two valleys down the middle, and then the extra valley on either side as well that you can open up for yourself. We haven't seen a lot of TVP on this map. I'm 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 interested. I mean, the the length of the map it feels long. So in in that respect, I think it's nice for Terran, at least Spirit style of Terran. It does slow down a lot of the. Uh, kind of funky builds you can do but spirit that game was very much about just sitting back and just waiting for something to happen although when something did happen he, he wasn't ready for it it seemed which was kind of funny 
Yeah, well, we're going to head into this game, too. I, I'm thinking about how this is going to go. I think the last time I saw Skillers playing PvT this map, he was mining the gold minerals and, like, going down the side for his expansion, which I think makes a lot of sense. Take away any sort of sieging power and pushing power for the Terran. Because the Terran's going to... I mean, usually it's the pros who loves being clumped up and not being able to be flanked, but a Terran, if they can get up to the libs and tanks, well, how do you do anything through the middle of the map on this map? So I think opening those doorways, opening those avenues to the side is perhaps going to be one of the goals of Skillers in the early stages. We'll see. I mean, like I say, this map, as we've both mentioned, right, this map has really been one where you can play so many different styles on. And so even kind of game by game, you can play something different. Maybe Skillers knows something here that would work well against his opponents. In the bottom left, the blue Terran from Na'Vi. It is Spirit. And the northeast side, the red Protoss from Team Liquid. It is Skillers. Whenever I see a map like this and there's a lot of area to blink into that main, I'm always like, whoa, they kind of scare me a little bit, you know? I like, granted, there's a lot of uh, building space where you can make this kind of nice barracks factory wall to kind of defend and put the tanks behind, but yeah, definitely tricky uh, going into it. So I've, I've automatically got that as a threat um, for Spirit, but. I do wonder how he's going to scout this game, if he's going to take the same approach of just being very, very blind, but... Hmm. Uh, curious. Yeah. Uh, that's actually very true. He just did not really care what at all what was going on the last time, right? He took that full risk of just being blind, and it was fine. You know, at the end of the day, he didn't really get punished by much. The Widow Mine drops were honestly pretty decent as well, eventually. Um, so, yeah. Maybe, uh... Well, we'll see. I mean... You might just feel as though Skillers... I mean, the thing is, though, I, I don't think Skillers is not a cheesy guy. Like, Skillers will crank out the all-ins. He will be a bit cheeky sometimes. So, I don't think you can just be like, oh, yeah, Skillers is like a, a showtime. He's just going to macro up. He's always going to be expanding early. So, you get away with this lack of a scout. Um, so, yeah, it's very interesting that he chooses this against Skillers of all people. I, I don't actually agree. I think Skillers is probably one of the pros players I've seen most often cranking out, like a proxy Stargate all-in or something along those lines. So, yeah. Interesting choice from Spirit, but I mean, so far it's working out because once again, there's no immediate aggression at least. So, yeah, Marine into factory. Off we go. Even though he's not scouting, Spirit has been more than capable of shifting it a gear. Like, uh, I, I, it was definitely a few years ago where he wasn't quite as good as he is now, but he went to be in Showtime, and it was one of those series where it was like, okay, Showtime's a beast. I think he he lost maybe game one in a normal macro game. Then he just did like the three most random all-ins you've ever seen and killed him. Like one base super giga all-ins, you know, and, and took the series. And it's, uh, he, so he's not as predictable, you know, really not. But going a, with a Stargate opening this game, Skillis is, he's going to use a different tech of choice here to crack him. Yep. Stargate is uh, going to be coming up. We'll see how Spirit deals with this. He's opening Cyclone Marines. Always feel like this is a good combination against the Stargate, right? Really gives you units that can fight against the first Stargate units and hold them off and fight them back. I think that's always a step in the right direction as those couple Marines come over. Adept will be chased down just a little bit here. <laughs> uh, annoying little buying time there, just stopping the CC from planting as early as it wanted to. But Cyclone will be on the map. Now Skillis knows it's a different opening from his opponent. And Skiller's going for the Phoenix route. And if you're going for Cyclones with quite a bunch of Marines, you do have to be a little bit careful. You definitely do. And this will be a, a pretty damn good number of Marines out. Like, it's going to be a lot of firepower. But Skiller's is doing what you talked about, where he takes out those gold nice and early. And it will allow him to take a relatively safe third. Granted, the Terran can drop on over, but he's not really got that much firepower just yet. Yeah. I do like that third for that reason, especially just having to drop over, because it's very rare that Terran has more than any medivac early in the game, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, while they can usually push with, like, a medivac of units and extra, dropping over really does limit how much they could get on top of a third base. So I do think it's a very safe approach. You know, see, Spirit is going to mine out down to the south, so that actually could make, be, make a way for him to push towards that third if he would like to. So that's a possibility. Skills gets the robo on the way is the next step of this. So we are likely to see Phoenix Colossus as uh, Spirit. I mean, getting the Liberator too. Yeah, he's absolutely, he's going to push down around this side. He knows exactly what Skillers likes to do. How about that? He has done his homework. He definitely has. And right now, Skillers hasn't taken the third just yet. It's just a pylon over there. So you get over here and you're like, 
Wait, there's no third? I mean, you do take the third a little bit later when you do go for a Phoenix Colossus. But, yeah. And it does look like it has been spotted by Skellis where his opponent is, but that doesn't mean he's going to get Cyclones? out of there scot-free. Let's have a look. That is... Oh, Ooh! Just so away. damn close. Yeah, just about gets away with that. As the command sent a couple more SCVs and the Viking continue up from Spirit. The tech lab coming down. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, Spirit's not going to push if the third base isn't there because that basically says, hey, I've been building units and only units and a bit of tech, but mostly units, right? So if there's units on the way, that's not something you typically want to try and fight into or fight against. Let's just see a couple more barracks coming up, the engineering bay coming through, and Skulls finally puts the third down. Yeah, Spirit just double checking the third isn't in the triangle. Yeah, I like Skellis has to be careful. The fact that this army is out on the map and he's out on the map with his Phoenix, this actually could be kind of tricky to hold. What does he actually have in the main here? I mean, he's got he's got five aggressive ground units, does very quickly recall here. And I even like the pro pulling there, getting all on the same spot could have dealt quite a bit of damage. But Spirit, look at this. He's at the front as well. This actually, I think Skellis is defending this fairly nicely, picking up Lots of Marines all at the same time. Definitely lowered his firepower with the Phoenix, but he's going to clean this up. So he's got away with the Phoenix opener against a lot of bio, and he survived without taking too much damage. This is definitely a nice little advantage here for Skillers. Yep, doing a good job of it. And uh, I actually think very beautiful defense, right? All said and done, he just holds in every position, doesn't take too much damage. Losses really were kept to a minimum, and... I mean, we lost one Phoenix, a battery. The OBS went down across the map. This really wasn't bad. He's killed a Lib. He's killed a Medivac of Marines. I mean, Skellis has a good defense once again, setting up well from the start. And that's going to put a bit of pressure on Spirit to maybe do something, because that's similar to how this last game started out. Skellis got off to a good start because the aggression never found anything, or just wasn't any aggression. And now Skellis gets to play his game. Certainly does. And Skellis, like the third base is only just finished, but... Very quick, starting a fourth base, and now these Phoenix, they're where they want to be, you know? The, the army is sort of back at home, but in the wrong place, and these Phoenix can just start having a whirl of a time. The turrets from these players have been kind of like on the aggressive locations to stop the Phoenix from flying in, but they weren't really ready to stop the Phoenix from flying with him, which, uh, yeah, I, I, this is the kind of game that Skillis really likes to play, where he just gets the freedom to do what he wants, his opponent has to sit back for a bit, Nice one. Yeah. I mean, Spirit is going to be forced to sit back as the upgrades finish from Skillis. Is there any point here you think Skillis is going to feel comfortable to start moving out and attacking? Because I know Spirit obviously likes to sit back defensively as well. Is there a moment where Skillis says, okay, well, now is my, my time. Is that just when he gets to, like, three cool offside? Or is that tank line always going to deter him from being able to push in? So... In my mind, if you're in Skillis' shoes, poking with the Phoenix is fine, and maybe opening up some rocks to allow your army to be in multiple avenues is a big deal. Because if you get stuck in one corridor and your opponent's in the other one, that's where problems arise. And tell you what, he has eliminated those rocks over there. Yeah. So he's done just that. He's getting lots of upgrades online as well. He's opening up other avenues here as well, just to make the map a little bit more, a little bit bigger for him to play around with. Because one thing, he doesn't want to get stuck against these tanks in a direct engagement like this. One interference matrix is used. These cyclones still being useful. That Raven has to be so careful against those Phoenix. Yeah, the Phoenix are going to threaten the Raven every single time it gets close, right? So it's not the kind of unit you can just let kind of wander into the Phoenix. They will get rid of it quickly. Uh, so that's definitely a big deal. As the Ghost Academy about to finish up from Spirit. Combat Shield about to be done. Marine Marauder Medivac. All popping out, we do see Marines continue to unload in the main base once again. It's more probes going down. There's a Zealot that's going to be taken out as well. We got a cheeky little recall off as the Zealots continue to just be brought across for the moment. Our Marines are going to come in once again here, just dropping back down, and the Zealots are going to get back onto those ASAP for the moment. This is kind of tricky for Skillers to deal with, but he's doing a fairly good job. Like... He's getting Blink online, so keeping these Phoenix alive isn't as important now. And he is up to, well, taking his fifth base. He just has to make sure he doesn't take damage. Like, mm -hmm. he's got a large amount of investments here in tech, like plus two, plus one, Blink, uh, getting the the nice... Is that the Observer speed as well over here? No, 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 it's the War Prism speed, actually. Um, but Spirit's doing everything he can to just harass with these little squads. It, it's a cool game. 
It really is. Spirit coming alive a little bit and getting some damage done, but now Skillers coming across here. Uh, okay, I was going to say, I don't know if he's really got enough, but that's a big warp in. Ah, okay, now we hit the Matrix on the Prism. Well, now we definitely don't have enough, right? This really shows how important that Matrix was as the Prism survives. Okay, we do have a few more Marines out. They will be able to take that down. Stopping the warp in is huge. Skillers is ahead in supply, though. He is going to finish a Blink and about a half plus two as well. His reinforcements coming from across the map. Man, the Prism Denial was absolutely massive. It was huge, because that's kept Spirit in the game. Granted, he's uh, pretty damn wounded here. And Skillis is just getting to that groove, man. Like, he's feeling confident to take the sixth base in the middle, which is very, very far forward. And Spirit is going to keep on doing what he's been doing. Just expand kind of slowly, trying to do a drop here and there. But again, Skillis' vision over the map is just absolutely huge. And he can run down the each valley threaten pretty massively in each one as well and honestly his army's very solid deals with the drop as well uh this, this game is looking pretty brutal for spirit like I, I don't know how he tries to get a footing here yeah i i'm with you mate it's uh it's fallen apart hasn't it i mean he had this moment or this spur of aggression that kind of looked kind of hopeful but Skillis' army's looking good. He's going to back up right now. Maybe get a couple more rounds of reinforcements. He's about a max. Once he's max, I would not mind to see Skillis go, go, go. Um, he's going up to, you know, six bases behind all of this as well. I mean, you could argue because of that, he doesn't need to go pressuring him, but I just don't hate the idea of him. Just, again, he's got the army that can kind of fight from afar with those Colossi and so on, right? Yeah, and he's got two sensor towers pretty, pretty closely positioned here. And even utilizing that little gold gap from earlier to try and run zealots in from here. And we're, get, we're getting to that army that... <laughs> we're getting to that army that's hard to deal with, man. You have to be so ready. A little pop in here and there to try and dodge these disruption shots. I'm not how, sure how good it was. Like, Skillis lost a lot of supply doing that, but does take out the PF. And at this point, if we look at Spirit's actual mining bases here, it's looking rough for him. Like... Third yeah. base, second base, they're, they're starting to run dry. There's not enough places to put these SUVs soon. Yep. No, this is, um... I'm gonna say, right? It's, it's getting to the point where this is probably going to be kind of difficult to stay in it because losing the fourth is such a big shot to your economy. You've got a new CC building, but it, it's taking quite a while. Obviously, it starts to float over there once it finishes as well, so this really is a way from being done. And again, Skillers just has so many bases himself. So even if you replace the fourth, it's hardly like that is the, the magical answer for you here. As uh, Spirit finds a bit of a scrap here. Skillers backs it up. He's getting the Dark Shrine, extra reinforcing gateways as well. So he can really build back up on the back of these fights very comfortably. That's going to be a big part of his plan now. Yeah, Zealots don't want to be taking that fight though. That is one chonker sat there blocking the whole lot. And Spirit, his army is growing. This goes count up to 10 right now. That warp prism does have, well, no. doesn't have long to live <laughs> against that little army. And these zealots, like right now, again, it's the same thing. Skillers takes a little bit of a beating early on, but then he kind of finds life. He's, he's getting online a little bit. Granted, he's still got a long way to go and Skillers is getting very rich behind all this. 85 probes, 3-3s three coming online for both players, but there's a lot of very scary stuff coming out for Spirit as well, like 3-3 three three himself, plus 2 on the air weapons, getting the fusion core, more star ports as well. I I, I don't know, man. Like, Skillers has been throwing absolutely everything at him and the kitchen sink, and it's just Spirit is weathering the storm. He is weathering the storm, but... He, he still needs to come out of it, you know, with the sunshine and rainbows afterwards, Ooh. right? Like, he has no fifth base right now, and this time we actually do successfully break into this location. So that's going to be a base, but it's a base for a base. Well, one for one is absolutely a fine trade for Skillers. Uh, Skillers can recall back home if he feels the need to to take on this army, but Spirit's just going to go for one base and then back it off. And like I say, one for one is very okay when Skillers has so many more bases than Spirit. So that is absolutely fine right now. Yeah, I feel like the real trouble is going to come online when these DTs come out in big numbers. Like, Shadow Stride is a huge upgrade, and that can really start to make the Terran really tax the multitasking. Uh, really can, and Skillis, he's, he's just making Nexus everywhere, man. This is true zerg style, and this is what we've seen from a lot of the good Protoss players today. Protoss is even pretty good against Terran in this event, man. It's, uh... 
Across all the regions, the pros have got uh, having pretty good results. Obviously, you know, Clem took out Goblin just earlier, but that's kind of the expectation. And Goblin obviously took out Humorine to get to this point, and it's cool. It feels like the pros are really finding their feet on these maps and in this uh, current meta on this current patch, and uh, definitely mm. figuring out PVT in a big way. It's very cool to see. This base over here should not stay alive, and Skellis has done a good job navigating the avenues, the corridors on this map. But when you see that much Terran in one place, you know they're going to be weak in another. Like, that was such a huge amount, and he's down here with a very guerrilla war squad. Going to take out quite a lot of SCVs. And Spirit, again, what's his orbital count at? It's just three this game. Just three. He's not, he's not a rich cookie behind all this. Like, his losses absolutely hurt. Yep. They, uh... They hurt a lot, man. They hurt a lot. I mean, 12 SCVs... When you're the one in the weaker position, disruptor shots coming in from the side there. One liberator tries to see to take position here. Those disruptors keep on connecting. The Colossi can fight from away from the liberation zone and do a lot. 16 SCV is dead. Once again, it's a group of units moving through on this other direction. So they're going to come back in once again and just see them already. Again, succeeding. Honestly, at this Spirit isn't dying immediately, but again, in the long term... He is not mining enough to really stay in this, and now the disruptors start to find some connections too. Now we're losing the ghost, the important tech units. They're going to be so much tougher to replace. I mean, to be fair, Skullis is actually losing a lot of his tech units as well. Spirit will make a good cause for this. He just cleaned out a bunch of Colossi and the Immortal and the disruptor along the way. Unfortunately, again, this little hit squad continues to have so much success. And there's a big opportunity to blink in the main here, like with the DTs as well. And getting on production is such a big deal. Like Skillis, he has not been trading so well. He's actually behind in resources lost this game. And some of these some of these uh, disruptors have been whiffing or not being as good as they could have been. Uh, again, kudos to Spirit for trying to make a game out of this. And if he can get all these Liberators together, he's on three so far, six in production. Whew. Yep, six Libs all on the way out. I mean... This really is the, the way to kind of hold down the fort, right? And to try and maybe take advantage of some of those narrow entrances to the bases. I mean, this is where Skillers may be able to even go further in overdrive when it comes to kind of splitting up and attacking everywhere. Still has so much of the map. I keep looking at that mini-map, I just see so many pro spaces. And okay, he's not traded the most efficiently, so he doesn't need these bases, but it's still kind of wild to see as DT Zealot sets up in the center. And of course, those counterattacks have continued to be pretty darn deadly as well. They really have. They really have. Like, Skellis is going to keep on looking for ways to crack his opponent. And there's nine Liberators on the map now. Six more in production. And he's going to start looking to deny Eco here. And with the way that most of these bases are situated on the edges of the map, it can get tricky. Like, it really can. And remember, they're plus two Libs. So they will two-shot Stalkers or one-shot them with the EMPs. And I'm seeing those little blue dots at the north as well. So Skillis... He's going to have to start looking at every base just to find out where he can actually mine from. And right now, Spirit, he's looking as solid as he ever has in this game, which is wild to say. He has weathered the storm and he's starting to see the rainbows on the other side of it, mate. He is alive. He's got to keep this base over the bottom right, apparently. He's afraid it's going to get denied. It's not going to land it just yet or just miss Rally, perhaps. But he continues to float it into the corner after stopping. Uh, apparently he's going to apply it over there, then turn around. And now he's actually going to start pushing some of the Protoss bases. I think it is the one thing that Spirit is missing. Denying some of these bases is a big deal. Because by denying these bases, he really opens up the game where you know, Skillers can't actually afford to take, take the trades as he's been taking them. It's a bunch of probes going down. And Skillers is not rich, by the way. He has basically no gas banked up, only minerals. As he's going to try and wrap around this army and fight where the Liberators were not siege, but man, it is just so many Liberators. And, and you know what Skillers didn't do? Because he's always been fighting, he never slowed down and, like, built into further tech. Because he could have very easily built into an army that really deals with Liberators fine, like, you know, Stargate units. And he had the chance to do that. Like, he was ahead enough in the game to just stop and, you know, make that happen. He chose not to, so he's kind of put himself in this position where now... He's genuinely bleeding out, he's rooting out of probes, he's running out of economy, he's running out of supply, and Spirit is actually looking to tie this up. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with Spirit, because this game did not look pleasant for him for a long time, but he has absolutely got to the stage of the game that he likes to play. And That's crazy. 
Skillis just hasn't known what to do. He, he tried to crack him all game long for a good 20 minutes, and Spirit just... <laughs> yeah, he just... It, it was like that unbreakable cliff, man, where the water keeps on smashing against it, but just... The, the level of attrition was just huge for him, and even these disruptors getting some nice shots on, but it, it's just not enough. Man, it just felt like Silas was in such a comfortable spot, but yes, yeah, Spirit just refused to die. And in doing so, has led us to this point where he gets the GG out of his opponent. Spirit is going to take the win. And Skulls has to look back at this one and be like, come on, like, I was in such a good spot. There's a point where he had killed the third, and his opponent was on three mining bases. He was on, like, five, six. Again, this is definitely the point where he kind of... He was doing it in the first game, by the way, where I was like, I actually hate that he's building the Stargate, because all he has to do right now is survive. In this game, he could have absolutely built a Stargate and teched up a little bit, right? Or the Fleet Beacon and teched up a little bit because he had enough of a lead to just stop and go and tech. And so that's a, a pretty big deal. So GG's and uh, we are going to get tied up one to one and getting ready to go into our next map in a couple of moments, which will be Side Delta as the decider map here. So Side Delta to kind of figure it all out and send one of these through to the playoffs. <laughs> I, I just thought about this. Like, uh, so Spirit asked for six minutes. Very specific. Yeah, he's not um, allowed six minutes. Madeline's going to tell him. <laughs> no, we, we we got twelve series today, Spirit. You know, like, jeez, Louise, <laughs> six uh, minutes is actually more than we take between series, Spirit. Like, we can't just do this between a map. <laughs> actually, yeah. Uh, but I was thinking to myself, of all people that ask for pauses, Spirit and Skillis are high up there on my list. You know, so I, I, it had to happen at some point between them, but. Yeah, Spirit played a really good game, man. Like, um, that was that was a tricky one to get himself out of. And I, I wish I looked at how many workers died that game. Mm. But what what an army he got to. Like, six Liberators at a time. Stocked up a lot of gas to do that. And booyah. <laughs> Skillis is not here either. So they're actually both AFK after that game. I mean, obviously, important matchup. Chance to move through. Guarantee the playoffs. Not have to kind of stress yourself out with another play day in the next couple of days. Just make your life a whole lot easier so understandable that they take a moment here just to play at their absolute best when we do get this underway so yeah and and the way it's going as well you can see it's well matched skill is definitely getting into better spots he was able to finish it off in game one but this game two yeah he, if he gets into a good spot again i'm pretty sure he's going to take a pretty different approach when it comes to kind of how he plays the game out because there's no way he's going to keep throwing units at spirit and unsuccessfully breaking through when he could just tech up and have a much easier time so I imagine he'll switch that up after the experience of game two. Uh, but first, we got to get that. I mean, maybe Spirit actually has a successful early game. Skillis' defense early has been great so far. But Spirit is absolutely good enough with that aggression to kind of manipulate the game into a different pathway from the early stages. So that's also something else to uh, to look at. Yeah, and I'm just thinking about that map in general. Like, the amount of map for getting a drop in the main base, the big game special, even a drop into the national and stuff, so Prosty have to be careful. Uh, Skillis is showcased uh two different openings so far the stargate play the twilight council play and spirit thus far has showcased that he's very willing to play the game blind without an sv scout or even a reaper scout which is uh very very risky i gotta say yep i mean that's uh, it's very true he's been playing kind of greedy in the early stages and trying to get away with it and so far that's been working out for him will it work out once again or will he go scout in the terran player top left is spirit And spawning over on the southeast side. And remember, the winner will be out of the groups, as in, you know, making it through in 3-0. It is the Red Protoss, it is Skillis. So a lot on the line here, being 1-1. Because this will make your life so much easier. And you mentioned it earlier, having a player like Hero Marine, which uh, at 2-1 kind of waiting for potentially you, uh, you, you don't want you don't, you don't to start making things more difficult for yourself. Yep. No, you want to make sure your life is as easy as possible. You're already going to be stressed out as one-on-one. -on -one. Try and, uh, you know, make it as chill as possible. Does look like Spirit is most likely going to go for very similar opening to what he's been doing. It will be enough gas to pump out a Reaper if he does so, please. But when you win a game like that, after being in a tricky position the whole time... It does make you, like, 
oh yeah, I, I, I knew what I was doing works, and yeah, I'll keep on doing it. Might as well. Because it did change what units he was making early on, and I think going for the Cyclones, that game, was a good call in that situation, because it was against the Stargate opener. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely felt like the opening had a lot of potential, right? Definitely felt like there was some opportunities there. Um... Yeah, honestly, I was very happy with what Spirit was doing, what he got up to. And just, uh, I mean, he really tried to kind of find an opening, but Skillers was very safe in that last game. He was very late to expand, right? So, that was a big deal. In this game, Adept to start things off for Skillers. He did get confirmation that was a Marine. So, it doesn't have to think about, oh, do I need a shield battery? Do I need to keep, keep the Adept at home? He can throw everything that he has across the map again until he gets confirmation on what he's truly up against. And he's going to go with the Stargate again. I don't think that's a bad choice in this situation. Skillus does like to be aggro, but he doesn't have to put all his eggs in one basket and just be like a, a Blink Stalker guy. He's good with the whole whole arsenal of what Protoss has to offer, I think. Yeah, Skillers has always been like that all around Protoss. Like he's, like I say, he was to me. He's also the kind of guy who will be cheesy and aggressive if he sees the situation present itself. So uh, maybe this is too big a stakes to kind of crank it out right now. But yeah, he, you know, he's not just limiting himself to one style. And we do go into the Phoenix again this time. Um, but yeah, but obviously potentially, you know, the last time was Phoenix Colossus. This time we could play Phoenix Charge. It's not a terrible thing on Side Delta actually. So we'll play a bit more aggressively there. There's a lot of possibilities. Certainly is. Gets to see that it is a Cyclone on the go. And this Adept, maybe it's going to be the same fate as game two. I mean, the damage done. I like that you broke the lock on there with the high grass, meaning that it will stay alive. A little bit better than what happened in the previous game. Yep. Robo being the tech of choice. Looks very similar to game two thus far. Yeah, that Robo facility coming straight down. Looks like those skills are very happy with the opening, which to be fair, why wouldn't he be, right? The opening of these games has been absolutely spot on. It's not the early game he needs to fix up. It's closing the game out from that advantage that he needs to fix up, if anything. So, uh, kind of taking mm. that ride as we see more Cyclones here from Spirit. So, the more Cyclones he gets, Lip coming up definitely looks as though he wants to push. Never found the chance to commit in Game 2. We'll see if he finds an opening that he likes here in Game 3. I like this from Spirit. This is really cool. This could actually be the kind of move out an army that could really punish Skillers. Like Skillers getting out of that immortal is absolutely 100% what he needs. And these Phoenix, I'm I'm very happy for Skillers that he's fairly close to base. Like you can see that he's he's like, where are you? Where you have to be somewhere. Like you you have to try and slow me down. But so far spotting nothing. And Spirit, he's just like, you know what? I'll meet back up with these two Cyclones. I don't think either one of them got to see the other one there. So <laughs> this is this is about as kind of single player-esque as you can imagine. And the third base goes down right now. And unfortunately for Skillis, he's just missed the army at every point. Yep. And here it is. I mean, insta-kill on the third. That's going to go. Not insta-kill, but insta-cancel on the third pretty much. Reduces the Phoenix going on to the SEVs. But this is already a delayed third, right? So to then... Have it delayed even further because this unit show up. And now we're actually going to drop two Cyclones in the main base. There's one Phoenix here, a couple Stalkers. We can lift a Cyclone as well if we need to, just to guarantee the kill. Now nice. I can't go into the Medivac. That's a pretty good shutdown because otherwise this was uh, not necessarily doing too much. Cyclone can lock on to help. But oh, the Liberator at the same time shows up on the right side. So Spirit's going to find a little bit more damage for himself, getting a couple more workers. But now the Phoenix is on that lib. This should come to a close. Should do. I like the fact that he turned around here to fight that Phoenix, just because he could potentially... He, is he going to get it? I think he might get it here. Oh. oh. Very, very close. I, I, I like the choice there, because it was going to die if he just kept on running. Um, Skillis did get to pop into the main and deal a little bit of eco damage himself. Also got to see that tech lab being made on that starport. Now, that is a very juicy target on the map that's very easy to kill if you're in the right location. And all things said and done, Spirit does have a third CC in his base, but no stim tech or anything like that available. So he's absolutely set back to where he kind of has been playing from in these games, where it's like, you know what? I'm going to sit back and see if I can survive and get my game going. Yep. Yeah, I mean, just uh, 
Oh, he gets set up as well. He was keeping aggressive with these Phoenix. He keeps finding value, man. This Phoenix may be a little bit too aggressive, of course, with the uh, uh, Marines nearby. But, man, not bad at all. Knocking down the Cyclones. And that obviously just opens the door for the Phoenix in the future. Because the Cyclones at this point probably would just stay back as, like, anti-air base defense. So, actually nice to knock down a couple of those. It just gives you more possibility further down the line here. Yeah, those Phoenix have actually been really good. And it's been a, just a low number of them as well. Like, that single Phoenix back at home defended so well. Like, yeah. I, I was kind of worried about it dying, but it did everything it had to. Um, and here, where he just oh, has to be careful. Has to be careful. Bunker and turret do make short work of those Phoenix if in the wrong location. But we're, we're getting to a spot that we've kind of found ourselves in most of these games where Skillis is just in a nice location, gets to roam the map. But then it's about, all right, all right, how are you going to take this third against this? Because maybe this is the worst spot that Spirit has found himself in within regards to trying to get that third. I, I don't know, man. It's 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 hard. It's definitely ain't easy. <laughs> um, yeah, this definitely ain't easy as Spirit is uh, going to be just trying to press forward. I mean, maybe now he can move into position here, but I mean, his economy is trailing heavily. Like, Skillis is just on four bases. Again, the control of the map, the early game is almost always in Skillis' favor, it feels like, and this is very true as well. As he finishes up Thermal Lance, he is a bit behind on his 1-1 upgrades. That's the one thing that Skillis is really lacking. But otherwise, I love everything about this from Skillis. I mean, the base set up, all the gates now coming online, charge done soon. He's really well set up for the future. Yeah, and the supplies again a little bit deceptive like Skillis just spent so much on infrastructure and tech so like 10 gateways are going to be online dark shrine double forge pumping out upgrades got warp prism on the go charge as well so he's he's ready for like a minute from now where uh, <laughs> whether he wants to try and crack spirit or whether he's comfortable defending his eco advantage here, he's kind of sat in the middle of the map he's got red little dots everywhere and Spirit looks like he's finding the one little nook there into that fourth base, totally uncontested. He's going to, yeah, stim straight on in here, and he's just going to try and pick up the cancel, which he will get, so cancels up the fifth, and now, yeah, on the right-hand side, jumping on that location as well. And that is going to be the double whammy push. I mean, cancel one base, he's oh, going to recall no. a Colossus into the second base. I mean, that's not exactly ideal. His Bioforce can stand and fight this. Honestly, a shame the Matrix went down the Colossus that was going to die anyways. Uh, if it went down on the other one, Spirit might have just kind of stimmed straight through and won this out. So, great aggression, and you've got to kind of push forward here, Skillers, because Spirit's about to kill your base off. He cannot afford to lose this. It was all looking good for him, but he's just not had an answer to stop this army getting in position at all. Oh, my goodness. This push, both of them came in without Skillers really knowing about either one of them. And these tanks, if they, they can take out that Colossus, they really can. He just target fire at the end here, but oh. will stay alive with... Oh, just a... A very small smidgen of health, and these feet. Oh, this is a disaster now. This feels like Spirit just weathered again the, the brutality of Skillis and just comes out swinging like true rope a dope style. Well, now Skillis has 80 probes, but he can't even really use all 80 probes, so he's not benefiting from that work lead right now. And Spirit has the army advantage to start moving forwards. This time, Skillis is going to pause. As, uh, Told you, man, that the. the the, the pause bros the pause bros the break bros yeah, yeah. I, I i whenever whenever either one of them is in a series you know it's going to happen so when both of them are in a series it's going to happen twice guaranteed absolutely breaks. guaranteed <laughs> breaks all right well take a couple moments then waiting for skillus whatever is the issue to be resolved here and we do have again obviously just to just to recap the game it's 2-2 coming up on either side. So upgrades are fairly even, slightly skill is favored. He's got more workers, but he doesn't have the base to use them. And Spirit is the one with the army, ready to go and pounce again. So uh, definitely a little bit, bit Spirit favored right now, because he's also going to have the map control to freely take a fourth base as well, I imagine. So I can only think that that's going to be in his favor. As we should probably check that Spirit's ready too before we count down. <laughs> Mapu on it. Go, go, go. Players are ready. There is a lot of gas for Skillis to spend, but the mineral count is looking pretty low. Neck and neck in supplies here. Raven is still on the map, by the way. And now we've got ghosts in the mix as well, or soon to be, three at a time. Skillis trying to double expand to try and get back into this. 
There you go. I mean, this is a nice little double drop. They're actually going to miss the prism. So the prism doesn't see it coming. The, the Manifacts don't see the prism. I think that's okay for Spirit, actually. The fact that he's going to get a double drop across the map unseen as the Raven's still about, by the way. Drops that Matrix on one of these Colossus, and that just makes this a much easier push in. Because now you're really missing the DPS to kind of punch those Marines. And so you get able to push in, and like I say, that drop on the right side going unnoticed until right now as we unload onto the warp in. I mean, I don't think that's going to do too much. The battery isn't going to be able to heal all of this up. As, yeah, there's just not enough units here. Now we start to warp in a few more Stalkers. Zealot's on the other side, though, so action just come through from Skillers as well, and he will start to get some SCVs to at least make up for some of the damage that's being taken. And he does force this drop back, so he finally cleans up. And 13 SCVs died to what didn't really feel like that much of a Zealot attack, so Skillers actually taking a pretty big shot of damage there. And he's going to lose this medevac. He's going to lose these units. His army supply now going to drop a little bit. He's still in that lead. But it feels as though he's maybe starting to run out of time to go and make something happen with the lead. It, I tell you what, this uh, this is very back and forth, man. Like, it looked very over with Skillis being in the lead. And then it's like, you know what? Uh, Spirit's in the lead. And now, now this last minute looked like it was in favor of Skillis. Oh, this is this is juicy. 2-2 Two -two is about to finish up for Skillers, which is a huge deal for these engagements, but he's got a lot of units out of position. There's no shield battery to overcharge here either. Big warp in does come in, but those slow. Vikings going totally uncontested. There's a slow warp in now as well because the Nexus dies. So the pylon wasn't connected anymore, so it took even longer for the Zealots to show up. And that gives Spirit even more of a chance. Now, Zelda's going to show up on the other side again as Spirit learned his lesson. It looks like an EMP into a few battle units, but there's still nothing on that right side base, so he will take a few losses. The planetary holds its own. And I think, in general, a comfortable cleanup from Spirit and Skillers just keeps on gifting supply away to his Terran opposition here. Now, will the Zelda's come back through, the mule will go down, and the Bioforce back over to clean those Zelda's out. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Spirit is definitely just withstanding what Skellis is throwing at him. He, he, he's doing it better every time, it feels. And now his army's actually looking really scary. And Skellis' eco lead that he once had just just isn't it anymore. DTs will absolutely be annoying when you're only on how many orbitals right now? We're, we're at three orbitals. So not enough to keep the scans consistently going. But Spirit's side. across the map with a massive army. Yeah, if his army's always been huge in comparison, and it's even bigger right now. 30 plus army supply in the lead. This is the point where Zelda's just don't really seem to get the job done, right? Where it's like, they just run in and they just melt. They can't ever really get enough of a surround. Fire Force is just going to come straight through, knock down that Nexus. A couple pylons and a battery that we can pick on through as well. So we've knocked down all of this, and the potential to get up to that high ground, chase some of these other Disruptors down. Now oh, the Disruptor's already <laughs> backing it up, so he might just give up another base. Those Vikings are brazen, man. Like, they just charged in there, and they're like, we haven't been get shot by any stalkers so far. And they've run in. They're almost to get a Colossus single-handedly. But Skillis, he, he's got 3-3 on the go. That's a big investment. He's got a Voidry in the making as well, maybe to try and help deal with this large number of medevacs. But this game is all about spirit right now. He's just been making a lot of right moves. We'll have to back off most likely just because this is a very strong army. Col oh, Marines from the north. Maybe he can pick off that Colossus. He does just that. Supplies very close between them. I tell you what, this is an absolute blood fest on both sides. <laughs> the blood fest is, yeah, he's uh, losing Zelt on the other side of the map. Uh, sorry, losing SCVs. Two Zelt on the other side of the map as well. I think spirit just... The reinforcements running in, losing that chunk of units was not helpful. Now DT's in the base as well. Oi, oi, oi. So Skillers is going to do a lot of damage. Spirit is down on workers. Skillers has got the right side base up and running, and Spirit's going to have to take a few moments here. DT's blink away, but they are caught on the Zealot, so they're still going to drop down dead. I mean, this is now a lot of army supply of Skillers going down, but Spirit lost 23 SEVs, down by 20 workers right now. And a few units on the right side here just going to jump onto this bio ghost force. And 3-3 is now coming online. Disruptors taking the wrong path through town. And I mean, Spirit's doing everything he can here. He's sniping Zealots. He's going to be losing a lot of his main base to this Warp Prism. That Warp Prism, absolute MVP in this scenario. Disruptor gets shot off <laughs> right as it casts that spell. And the Colossus, don't think that's going to make it out of here. I mean, oh my goodness, this is... This is carnage. Absolute carnage. We're back into the position where Spirit just has a lot more army supply than his opponent. That was kind of true earlier, and then it kind of dropped away from that. 
Can we get rid of this prison, man? Like, one Viking, please just go and shoot this down because it is causing you so much trouble, Spirit. He's across the map at the same time. He's going to check the right side base. There's nothing there. There's a pile on there, but I don't think he wants to waste the time going to get it. So he can get it. instead, he's going to try and take down this base, which is taking down many a time. A scan against the DT immediately. There's the gateways he can knock down here as well if he wants to stay on this position if he feels like he won't be punished for it. Nice to get rid of some production because right now anything counts. He's still losing out in the main base. I can't believe that Prism has been allowed to live so long. I mean, Skiller still has a lot of work to do because even though he's taken out a lot of the uh, reinforcements, that army of spirit, how do you beat it? I, he's fighting with shield barrier overcharge here. There's a couple of disruptors in the mix. Oh, oh. my. Okay, it's not a bad shot, but he's going to need a couple more of those to really get it done. And Oh, I, th I think spirit's broken, man. I think so, too. There's an extra disruptor shot. We should uh, never go off. The Void Ray shows up, but there's Marines and Ghosts that should be able to shoot that down. So the Void Ray is going to fall as well. The Robo Facility is again depowered. There's one more DT we need to scan. The fresh base here from Spirit is already under attack, but yeah, Skillers has 11 army supply left. He's got nothing across the map anymore either, so he's missing out on that aggression that has been so good for him throughout. And it does seem as though we are probably getting to a final GG right now. Spirit is going to take down a bonkers series over Skillers. Really felt like he was dead in game two. But man, he he, he picked up the pace and he played like that in game three. And I think that made the difference because that's what Skillers just could not deal with. Every game felt so good for Skillers early. But Spirit gets to that point where once the drops start working, it's like, man, he was all over. And then Skillers couldn't win a fight to save his life. Absolute madness. There was one real defining moment in that game for me. It's where Skillers kind of had units all over the map to see an attack coming, but kind of missed that attack in the bottom, which was just a double drop, by the way. And it was for his fifth base that he was making. And then it's like, oh, it's there. Sends his whole army over there to deal with a double drop, while Spirit's main army went over to his already established fourth, which was way more valuable. And then he recalls into it, loses a Colossus straight away. And he ended up losing both the bases, which was just... That was a, a game-ending mistake, and that allowed Spirit to get more more into it, like uh, far more into it. And I, I think overall Spirit just showcased that it was, it was very solid. And...